Hey everyone, I'm King of Valence. Thanks for watching this speedrun challenge. This is Spore, completed from Cell Sage to the center of the galaxy without evolving our creature. This means we will not be making any Cell Stage edits, no Creature Stage edits, we won't be using the Tribal Outfitter, we won't even be using the Civilian Outfitter. So this cell right here, that's all we get throughout the entire run. We're not going to be changing or modifying this cell that, as it turns into a creature at all throughout the entire run. I want to first give a huge shout out to Tori Dory on YouTube, which is where I saw this challenge done first. Tori gets to the beginning of Tribal Stage, but stopped, but... So I wanted to see if I could give it a give it a shot myself and see if I could complete the whole game. There's also a great video by Zach Dog on YouTube, where I got some really helpful advice. So I'd recommend checking both those videos out as well. I think they're really good and definitely worth watching. So this final time clocks in at an hour, 20 minutes, and 46 seconds. But we'll be skipping around to show some of the key highlights of how it was done. But we'll have the timer in the corner, so you always know how long this video, this run actually took as we're skipping around, showing, showing the best moments. I'll be using my standard Spore speedrunning setup for this run, so there are no other custom creatures at the start of this run in the Sporepedia. All other creations in the Sporepedia were the default 1631 Maxis creatures. I'll be showing that at the end of the stage as well. But something really interesting about the Sporepedia that I didn't notice until doing this run, since I'm never changing this creature, and I'm not making a custom creature, there's no new creature file stored anywhere. I'm not sure where this particular creature is being stored, possibly just it's part of the game because it's a Max's default creature, but at the end of the game, we won't be having any changes to the Sporepedia. So it's kind of like we're not only not evolving the creature, we're also not evolving the game in a certain way. Sporepedia's not changing, and if you just do it in one complete run through and you don't save, you just quit out to the main menu, it's like you didn't even play the game, you're not even changing the game in any way. So there's the end of Cell, and I'm going to show that there's only the Maxis and everything are the same, shows there's no custom creations throughout the entire game. We still got the speedrun achievement and nothing to do in the editor, so we're moving on out of Cell Stage. Cell stage wasn't too bad, but creature stage and tribal stage is where the real fun begins, and I think it's much more interesting for this challenge. So at the start of creature stage, no matter what we're doing, a speed run, easy mode, hard mode, casual runs, you always want to ally the first two nests. Since these early level 1 creatures, they will only, they will always only have level 1 sing, so even our unevolved creature can still match the Simon Says. So that allying the first two nests will give you enough DNA to pass the first level one part of creature stage. We're gonna slither on over to the second nest. Cut forward to the end of this nest. So we're, after beating level one, we're gonna go back home, pick up a packmate, and we're gonna find some easy to socialize creatures. Now these particular creatures, they have level two sing. Now level two sing may seem out of our league since we only have level one sing, but our two creatures' abilities, my creature and the pack creature, their abilities stack. So together, as it's as if we have level two sing. So us two on one can actually socialize these creatures. And these creatures in level two, they won't team up. We always do, they always have just one creature by themselves. So later you know, they have the big group, they all, they all try to socialize together, but here in level 2, it's just by themselves. Here the next nest, we found that these were really uh, weak combat creatures, they only had level 1. So I thought, yeah, 2 on 1, that should be pretty easy. And just like socializing, these creatures also will not team up, they will always be one at a time. So us 2 on 1 should make this real easy. In level 2 of creature stage, it takes about 3 nests of either socializing or extincting to make it onto level 3. So we socialize the first nest, we extinct the second nest, and now searching around for a third nest, we found that there's potentially easy to socialize. Now these creatures have that charm, so it made it a little difficult, but give it enough tries, they'll ask for sing enough, so we can actually ally the nest. Now that we made it to level 3, we're gonna have to start fighting level 3 creatures. Thankfully we get two creatures in our pack, so we're just gonna start throwing our creatures at them until we win. So remember, some of our pack members may die, but that is a sacrifice we are willing to make because that keeps us alive and keeps us progressing through the stage. So this is just a little bit of tricky combat to slither around to make sure you don't die. Thankfully, this nest was really close near our home nest, so I could slither on home, recruit some friends, and pull them away to help with us the two-on-one. Since we're in level three, they're actually going to start teaming up. 
Here I like to call it uh, the small squad, the small rogue. You gotta look out for all these opportunities. I saw these guys were fighting and I wanted to get that kill myself. So you gotta look out for some opportunities when you're doing these crazy challenges when you only have level one bite. You gotta use the environment to your advantage, see other people fighting and try to get snag the win. Here, once you get an attack on one of the creatures, they'll start engaging you. But since we're so slow, you want to casually approach the creature and make it look like you're nice, and then you attack them, and then they'll start engaging you. If you're targeting them and you look like you're about to attack, they'll run away, and there's no way you're going to catch up. Moving on to level 4, so we're going to migrate to our first migration nest, which gives us our 25 point bonus. And now in level 4, you know, fighting level 3 creatures, that's one thing. Fighting against level 4, that's another. So we're actually going to call in some recruits. So unfortunately we can't get Summon Flock because that's an ability for being Omnivore out of cell. We get the Raging Roar because we were Carnivore out of cell. But say these creatures, say they have 6 attack but 1 social, that's actually perfect for us because we still have level 1 Sing, they have level 1 Sing, and our 4 total creatures, you know, a combined effort of 4, they can't exceed that. So we're actually going to, able, going to be able to ally this nest and then we're going to recruit these creatures in our pack. We have to exclude one of our creatures so we can join this guy to our creature. And thankfully when they're adding to a pack, they don't team up. It's always one at a time when you're adding pack mates once they are allied. So I'm going to add all three of these guys to our pack and have these guys fight on our behalf because it's gonna, it would take way too long to have our really weak creature actually attacking level four creatures. So these are level three creatures we're going to use to fight level 4 creatures. And it's nice when there are really weak level 4 creatures. So now we're now we're going fast. That's much faster than biting with level 1. I think they have level 2 bite, pretty sure. And that took that creature down nice and fast. So that's basically the strategy for level 4. And we want to keep these pack members alive this time. We can't just yeah, throw them into the fight, have them die. They're actually going to be very important for tribal stage, as we'll see in a second. So, the point of the end of this stage is we're just going to look around for weak level 4 creatures and have our stronger level 3 creatures fight them. So these are also some pretty weak creatures. So you get, get, this, get that fight in there, and once they're attacked, then they will start engaging you. We also migrated to our second nest, which is along the coastline. That's also very important, and the same is in my regular speedruns. You always want to end creature stage on the coastline, because that helps set up the beginning of tribal stage and civilization stage much better. So that's the end of creature stage. We have three creatures that are not our species in our pack. This is going to be very useful for tribal stage. So it's no point in the editor, so it's going to move on into tribal stage. So at the beginning of tribal stage here, you see that those pack members, they're actually in our pen. They become domesticated animals. This can become our pets, and they're going to lay eggs for us. And that's going to make tribal stage, like, way easier. The egg production of our pack pets is actually kind of interesting. There's about a two minute cooldown from the beginning of the tribe, tribal stage before they start making eggs. But with three pack pets, they will start producing five food worth of eggs every 23 seconds. This is interesting because if you gather three animals during tribal stage like normal, they will produce you 10 food points every 46 seconds. So it's the same rate, but for some reason these guys give five in half the time. Half the amount in half the time. And collecting eggs is much faster than killing other random creatures and bringing their food back. I tested this uh, in another world and I used the fastest walking creature I could make, and it took them 19 seconds to go gather the eggs. So if I can make eggs every 23 seconds with our super slow slithering creatures, we're going to send multiple creatures at a time to go collect all the eggs. So that will make food production really quick. As soon as we're done outlying the first tribe, we're going to look around at the rival tribes, because sometimes there's an epic nearby, and we want to initiate that kind of scripted sequence as soon as possible, because those other uh, tri members can kill the epic and that will make it easier for us so we don't have to deal with the epic. So here I'm going to have multiple people gathering eggs at a time while recruiting instrument players. They can actually produce eggs faster than we can gather them so food supply is never an issue using this strategy. And we're going to move on to the next tribes. Thankfully with all the food we've got we can start gifting green and cyan. They are the ones that are angry with us. On easy uh, you get two angry tribes and one neutral one. It takes about two or three minutes for the angry tribes to either start raiding you 
uh, start attacking you if they are red angry or raiding you for food if they're orange unhappy. So it's going to take a really long time for us to slither over to green and ally them, so we want to make sure that they're both neutral with us before they start attacking. It'll take about six minutes for them to become ambivalent to go back down into upset. It'll take six minutes for them to lose one layer of happiness with you. On our way to pink, you're stumbling in by another epic. Hopefully we can slither out of the way. No, the epic looks like it wants, it wants some tribe members for dinner. I'm trying to get them out of the way, and no, my guy got flattened. Still at 10 health, and he's slithering away. Look at him go. If only they could slither that fast all the time. That guy looked panicked, so he's he's running away really quickly. Thankfully, the epic uh, loses interest, and we can move on to pink. We're just going across. Limiting the amount of movement you have to do with your tribe members is very important, especially when they're so slow. So we're going across the map from green to cyan. Thankfully, we got cyan in between our nest and pink, so we got cyan quick ally, and then we have lavender, the last, the last tribe we have to deal with. Unfortunately, they are kind of far away, and I want to make sure I feed my tribe members, because it looks like a lot of them are starving. When they gather normally, when I'm doing this a typical run, they eat as they're gathering, but since we're you know, gathering eggs, they actually don't eat the eggs as they're gathering. So I'm going to have them eat before we make the final trek to Lavender. And it looks like I missed one because this tribe member is actually starving to death. It has 10 health left, but hopefully he can finish the performance before he dies. Looks like with his final breath, he's going to do a didgeridoo. What, what a champ. He's, he's, the show must go on. This guy definitely knows how to put on a show. Can we make it before he dies? I, I think we I think we did. I think we finished the stage. He's part of the performance. You know, I think he's dead now, but he, he made it in the, the end credit scene of that performance. And of course now we're moving on to Civ stage, and that's kind of the challenge done. Everything after this is not really dependent on the creature, but we're going to add one more honor rule. We're not going to create any custom vehicles or buildings or, or spaceships just to stick with the no evolution of the Sporepedia. Now we're in Civilization stage, my favorite stage. We're still trying to get to the center of the galaxy, so I'll show you how to do this super quickly, get to the center. We only got about 10 minutes left, it takes about five minutes per stage. It's not easy, we're just gonna try to capture all the spice geysers, and as soon as we get all the spice geysers, we should have enough money to then buy more tanks to take on the small cities. There's going to be two small cities, and one additional large city on this continent. And then we're going to move on to the other continents and continue taking over the world and we will go on into space. So here we're, now we're done with this continent and we're going to send our boats over to the far, far continents. This particular planet has a pretty nice configuration where those water nations are pretty close together so that after the first takeover by the boats they can just quickly move on to the next continent that way they don't have to trek very far this is pretty standard just going to switch our fast vehicles for powerful vehicles since we can switch them without having to sell them that way we can actually travel very quickly and take over very quickly we just have to switch them out Civ is pretty fast and we're done with Civ and we're going to build our spaceship by taking one of Max's. And you can see there, we also didn't have any custom vehicles yet. In space, we can just decline the mission and we're in space. Head on over to the, our moon so we can scan the spaceship. There's Galactic Gods. So sure we got one continuous game. No evolving the creature, no creating custom vehicles. And we are going to scan the spaceship, and then we're going to, of course, farm Frequent Flyer to get to Frequent Flyer 2. We get this city, and then we get Trade Route, and we're going to buy Interstellar Drive 2, because we got the Frequent Flyer 2. And then we're going to make our one pit stop, where we pick up one rare. This rare will be all the money we need to make it to the center of the galaxy by buying energy packs and refuel along the way. We pick up a rare, and we're going to our last pit stop, where we're going to buy energy packs, thanks with the rare. And then that should be everything we need to make it to the side of the galaxy. We're almost there, just a quick on drive through the Grox. Remember, the Grox are too slow, they can't catch up, and it's, they're super easy to pass. Like, this should never be a stressful time. So just make sure you keep your energy filled, and just keep clicking. This isn't that, 
not too bad, not a stressful time. You just keep going clicking, ignore the, the war, hit escape so you don't have to move your mouse too far, and you reach to the center of the galaxy. Before we go into the final Galactic Core cutscene, I'm going to show one more time in the Sporpedia that in the Everything in Maxis, there's nothing was created, still 1631, nothing changed in the Sporpedia, and there we go. Center of the galaxy, without evolving the creature, without creating anything in the Sporpedia, without even evolving the game itself. So thanks so much for watching. I had such a fun time routing this, this game. Hope you had a good time watching. Let me know what you thought of this type of video. This is my first type of video with uh, cuts and edits and a voiceover on top. Let me know if you want to see more challenges like this. Leave your suggestions in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'm King of Valence, and I hope to see you next time.